excited for today. I'm excited for the word that the Lord has given me. Um, it's been stirring on my heart for about two or three weeks, and I, I can't I can't wait to, to to bring this message forth of what God is doing. And and about two weeks ago, He just started downloading me in, into me the word restoration, and that's all I would get. You know, just restoration. And I think God's people at this time and in, in, in our culture, we're fixing to start seeing a restoration. We're going to see God do a new thing. And that word restoration, it, it means a rebirth and a new, you know. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're going through something like that, you just hang in there because God is fixing to start rebirthing and he's going to bring restoration into your life. And, um, me personally, I like to... I'm a, I'm a, I like old things. I like to find trailers. We work a lot of cows, and I'll, I'll go to somebody's house, and there'll be an old trailer off in the bushes, and I want that trailer, you know. And they're like, "What do you want that thing for? That that thing's rotted out, and and uh, you know what what they think is is no good or or too far gone. And and most of the time, those things are way bigger than my pocketbook. You know what I mean? I I got these big dreams and these big ideas, and I get this vision for these trailers and these trucks and and I, and I want to go get them, and I'm like, hey, I got, and then it sits there a year, and then I'll get to it, and, and I got to move it around four or five times. But every time I move it or look at it, man, I could see a vision of it, or I see, hey, this, we're going to fix this. And, and when we, I built a trailer, me and DJ had built a trailer like five years ago, and I mean, it took us a year to build it because every time I would see something, I would change it. And then I would go do something, and I would see a need, oh, man, I need this on this other trailer. And we, we, we'd have a, it was like a catch unit. I mean, one guy could run the whole unit, and it was just easy, but it took a lot of trial and error, and it took a lot of time. And um, when I see these, I call them the diamonds in the rough, and it's a lot like people. We do the same thing with horses. We, we see what they're, what they're called to be. We see what they're going to be, not what they are. And that's the same thing we do as Christians. You know, We see people, and, we, and God sees people as what they should be, not what they are. And so we're always speaking to the calling on people's life rather than speaking to what they are or where they are in their walk. And so um, people need to be restored as well as, as, uh, as, as things that we restore and people on a daily basis. No matter what it is, it all takes time. It's tear down and rebuild time. You know, we, we tear these things down, we take off the old and we put on the new and we make it new and we put some paint on it and we clean the inside and we get the inside fixed up and there's no difference that, than doing that with a, with a person. You know, take time and we're gonna, some, some old things gotta go and some new things gotta come and, and we just have to see that. And um, I just wanna reiterate on what David and Haley had talked about with Jesus being led into the wilderness in, in Matthew chapter 4. Oh, the title of my message is, It's Not What It Looks Like. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but how many, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it seems. And uh, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, let me turn there. If you got your Bibles, turn there. If you don't, get your phones and flip there or whatever. That's all right. I'm just glad it's not me. We'll get it fixed in a minute. I can, I can hold the uh, lapel or the handheld. I can't. I'm not supposed to leave the stage. Bring me that mic. All the sound techs, all sound techs anywhere hate lapel mics. You got this one? Good. Yeah, nobody likes lapel mics, and uh, usually just the speakers like them, and nobody, anybody that has to deal with them during the service likes lapels. And I couldn't hold, I couldn't hold the mic my first five times preaching because I couldn't stand here and not shake, you know. And so when I get to thinking about it, well, I just sit there, and so uh, the, they wouldn't let me preach with this for for a little while because I couldn't hold it and be still. So, but uh. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And what I want to do is I, I want to walk through this. And, 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 and a lot of times we think that, you know, 
Okay, Jesus comes and he gets baptized. And, then, and, and, and as Christians, a lot of times he, we come in, we get baptized, and then we're like, oh, man, we're good. We don't have to do anything. You know, let's just go to church and live our life. And then it says, after he was baptized, the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be, to be tempted by the devil. And so, 90, I mean, all the time is when we come to Christ, we get baptized, that's when it starts. That's when life really begins. You know what I mean? We got, we're rebirth. We have a new, we're new, and then the fight starts. And that's when you need to recognize that the most. And he goes through there, and he's being, and uh, he's, he has fasted for 40 days, and then the devil comes. I can't, I can't miss breakfast and not make lunch and not want to chew somebody's head off. You know what I mean? And, and so, you know, one thing about if you're working for us, we know the three times of the day, and that's when we're going to eat breakfast, when we're going to eat lunch, and when we're going to eat dinner, you know. And so I couldn't imagine fasting 40 days, being led out by the Spirit, fasting 40 days, and then the devil come to tempt him. And he tells him, hey, I don't live on, I don't live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the, the mouth of God. And, he, and, and he, he tempted him three times. And uh, what I want to ask you is, and, and what we talked about is who led him there? And a lot of times we run into these struggles and we want to blame God and we want to blame other people and we want to blame the devil. And really, a lot of times it's God leading us into the wilderness to go get some stuff to teach us and to get, get some things off of us. And, uh, but I, I remember I used to work, uh, I, I moved rigs in South Texas in my mid-20s and, and it was a pretty wild time of my life. And uh, I worked with some guys and uh, one, of them, one of them was Michael and the other one was Miguel. And Michael was... He was a big guy. I mean, he was a scary guy. He was big, and he was a big old teddy bear. But Miguel, he was about that big. He's probably a little skinnier than me and about a foot taller. And Michael would always pick on Miguel, and he'd tell him, Miguel, I'm going to beat you to death. You know, I'm going to. He just always picking on him. And But if he told Miguel to go to the top of that tower and get the wildcat off the, the tower, Miguel would ask him, do you want him dead or alive when I come back? You know, he was just that kind of guy, and he was always picking on him. So one day they were just joshing around, and they got to uh, just talking trash back like guys do. And, uh, and he goes, hey, I'm fixing to jump on you. And old Miguel turns to him, and he says, you're not going to do nothing to me that I don't let you do. And, I mean, I, that right there stuck with me. And I was, I mean, I wasn't in a good place. I mean, I was in my mid-20s. We'd been through some things, you know what I mean? And we're down in, it's like the Wild West, you know, in South Texas moving rigs. Like, you just, to each their own. And But I remember that. I never forgot that. And, and it was like, the devil can't do anything to you that God don't allow him to do. He can come up in your face. He can be all around you. But at the end of the day, he cannot do anything to you that you or, the, or God doesn't allow him to do to you. And you have to recognize that. And uh, your response to the problem is what God is after. He isn't bothered by what's happening. The question is, how are you responding to the problem? Are you mad or do you trust God even when it hurts? In uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, We do not war with flesh and blood. And, uh, you know, these past few months I've been in some relationship battles like, you know, just I feel like the enemy has really been after attack. He's been attacking some of my relationships with people that I grew up with and, and, and people that I've helped and they've helped me. And it just, I recognize it. I recognize what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to divide that, you know, because God, obviously God has a purpose for that relationship. And I, and I, it's good that you recognize when God tries to come against or when the devil tries to wreak havoc in a relationship. And, you know, you always have to remember, we don't war with flesh and blood. It's, 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 it's just, you just got to get to a place in maturity in your Christian walk to say, you're not my problem. You're, you're not the problem here. What's, what's at stake? What's, what's the enemy trying to do? What's the enemy trying to take us out? And, you know, I, I've, in the past few months, I've done that. And, uh, you know, I'll come home, and it was like one thing after another. And I'd come home, and I'd say, man, I'd go in there, and I'd tell Taylor, Hey, uh, I'm hurt. You know, this hurts. This is not fun. I don't know what the enemy's doing. I'm really mad. I, I don't know what I want to do. I want to lash out or I want to, you know, I, we're human. 
our flesh rises up, and I'm like, I'm, I want to go do something here. I want to be mad, and I want everybody to know. And, and, and Taylor's not here today. She, uh, Cass and Cantor were coughing, so we didn't think it would be a good idea to bring them in to the, uh, the nursery and the, the kids' church with them hacking. And Cass is pretty dramatic. He'll start coughing, and if you're not watching him, he'll start gagging. And, uh, you know, and it's like, I, I hear you coughing, son. Just, it's going to be okay. But he's pretty dramatic when it comes to it, you know, like, Dad, you see me over here, right? And so they weren't, they weren't, none of us got to sleep last night. So uh, she's either, she's either praying for me right now or catching up on some sleep. So, but uh, I'll always go in and, and, and I'll open up to her and I'll tell her, look, I, this hurts, you know. And she'll say, and the, she, every time I know She's going to ask me the same question, and it's just, she said, well, have you tried praying for them? And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, I pray that you order a Dr. Pepper and they give you Mr. Pib or something, you know. I don't, no, I don't want to pray for them, <laughs> you know. But that's Taylor's heart, and Taylor, she knows that because she's had to do that. And, and, and I'm telling you, when, when, you, when, you, when you change your mind and you change your perspective on people, it's better off when you just can say, you know what, I don't, I don't wish that on anybody. I want, I want you to be good. I want things, I want things in your life to, to do good. In Proverbs chapter twenty-five and verse twenty-one, it says, "If your enemy is hungry, give him food. In doing so, you will reap the burning coals in his head." And uh, if you would turn with me to Romans chapter twelve and verse nine. And, uh, the, you know, I, in my Bible, it says, uh, it starts in verse 9, it says, Behave like a Christian. Let love be without hypocrisy. Adore what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another. We'll continue reading on to 21, but it says, Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, disturbing, uh, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you and bless and do not curse. And I've had, I've had to remind myself of this, underline that. I mean, if, you, if, if that's something you deal with, you need to underline that because, I'm, I mean, it, it's, we're human. I'll be the first one to stand up here and say that, hey, there are times that I want to lash out, and and we'll get to that here sh shortly. But uh, uh, rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who we, with who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own uh, own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men, and if it's possible, as much as it depends on you. Live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge. Let's see here. Do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, "Vengeance is mine," says the Lord, and I will, I will repay. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For in doing, you will reap the burning coals in his head. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. And about what it does is when you pray for people that don't even know they hurt you, it teaches you forgiveness before we were ever hurt. It teaches you how to forgive before you're ever hurt by someone. And um, we recognize that, we deal with it, and we move on. And the other day, about I guess it was about two weeks ago, we were working some cows in this this mark on my face, I was in the back pens, and this is from a gate. And uh, we, were, we were in the back pens, and it was pretty muddy, and, and we just got shoes on our horses, and I didn't want the mud sucking the shoes off the horse's feet, and it's just money, you know. And so I'm like, I'll just get down, and this guy, he don't have shoes on his horse's feet. He can bring me cattle, and then we're going to shuffle them up here. It was hot and wet and muggy and nasty, and I get in there, and we're going pretty good, and there's this guy. He's wanting to help, and he's young, and he... He doesn't really know a whole lot, but he's he's there. He's one of those Miguel's. If if you tell him, 
I need that. He's going to come back with it, you know, no matter at all cost. I, uh, he, he, we had a trailer load of cows one day, and there was a dog that got in the front of that trailer, and the cows loaded up on top of He crawls in the top of this trailer with these hooking cows and gets the dog out. Like, he's just that guy. Well, he's in the back pens helping me, and we're, we're sitting there, and, we, you know, we've, we've been through a pen of cows, and uh, they're, they're fighting them, and we're trying to get them up there and get them sorted and get them loaded and get out of these pens. And, well, he, he pushes a gate, and that, in, in our world, that's a, we can't do that. Don't, don't push the gate, you know, like, he'll, you'll just throw it. Well, throwing it is dangerous because what happens is if I don't have my hand on it and, and, and I'm two foot behind a cow and she kicks, well, something's got to catch it. My hand didn't catch it. My face caught it, you know. And so, I, I mean, she kicks the gate, and I back up, and I, like, go to my knee. Like, I get down, my hand's on my knees, and I can feel the blood on the outside, and then I could feel the blood on the inside. Like, this is going to be bad. We got them. So I got my stuff gathered up, and Cole and Coy, they're up there, and they're like, hey, he just busted his face. Get him a rag, you know, or whatever. We got to keep going. And so we get gathered up, and, uh, I mean, it was like, got the blood off of me. I had this this bright blue shirt on, and it was like, I remember getting up out of the bed, and I said, Taylor, I wake her up, and I was like, Taylor, your confidence level has to be up here to wear this shirt. She was like, what are you talking about? I was like, this is my new favorite shirt. And, and so, I mean, I put that shirt on, and I tell a div about it on the way there. And some, I don't know which one it was. He says, how do you like that shirt now? How's your confidence level, you know? And I said, well, that didn't ruin my day. I ain't letting that ruin my day. So, yeah, my day's still pretty good, and it's still my favorite shirt. And so we move on. And, I mean, it wasn't like two cows later. I turn around, and this guy, he tosses the gate. And, I mean, again. But this time, I... I just turned, and it just, like, crammed me in the shoulder, and I had a rattle paddle, and I turned around, and I mean, I I was like, I'm going to hit him with this paddle, or I'm going to turn around, and I just turned around, and I just started just, I tried to beat all the BBs out of the paddle on the panel, <laughs> and I just stopped, and I, I turned around, and I said, man, buddy. I know you're trying to help. I'm still bleeding here. I said, I know you're trying to help. My eyes are watering. I'm not crying. But if you ever got hit in the nose, it hurts. And, like, your eyes just water. And so I remember I said, I turned around. I said, buddy, I, I know you want to help. And I'm so grateful to have you back here. I said, but you can't do that because I can't take another I can't take another <laughs> panel to the face. I was like, if David finds out I got my nose broke and I got two black eyes, he's not going to let me not preach in two weeks. So you're not, you can't hit me with that gate no more. And it, I was like, so, he, you know, and his horse is just looking there. Everybody's big eyed watching, you know. And so I was like, uh, I said, hey, just, if you'll just get them up there, I'll just come behind you and we'll finish this. We'll be done in a minute. And so, uh, we moved on, and at the end, we were sitting there eating lunch. He goes, hey, I'm really sorry. I said, I know you are, buddy. It's all right. You know, we're going to move on. It's okay. We're going to, we're going to, um, it's okay. And he goes, well, I'm going to do something for you. And I was like, what's that? <laughs> he said, I want to come to work for you. I'm going to give you a day's labor for free. And I said, man, I tell you what, I got plenty of help. Don't worry about it. Thank you, though. <laughs> No, I can't take it. And, uh, he, but you know he, that guy's got a good heart. You know what I mean. And I'll take I'll take a hundred of those people over a, any one guy that thinks he knows what's going on any day. You know, and and uh, he was he's a good kid and uh, he's got a good heart. And uh, it's kind of like Jesus with us. Oftentimes when we sin, and uh, that word sin just simply means missing the mark. And Jesus says, "I forgave you when I hung on the cross. You just got to receive it." Jesus is in the restoration business. And if you would turn to me with Joshua to Joshua chapter 1 verse 1. And if you got a pen, get it out. And this this is a this this is Moses that died and and we'll get into that story, but it says uh we'll just just get a get you a pen and get your Bible out and and I want you to underline some stuff in this scripture. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass to the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. And this is like the passing of the mantle. 
Does that just, just underline Moses' assistant. Like he was with Moses. He's seen what Moses does. And when we talk about Elijah passing the mantle to, to Elijah, this is what that means. It means Moses is gone now, and we still got something to do, so we got to keep moving. And a lot of times we are, we are Joshua's to a lot of Moses's. When the time comes that, hey, the mantle's got to be passed, it's our job as Christians on your job, in your family, to pick up that mantle and keep moving forward. You know what I mean? We can't let it fall to the ground. And, that, and that's not just preachers and, and, and teachers. That is what you guys do. That is our, that's, that's, a, that's your job as a Christian is to pick that mantle up and keep it moving forward. And, and this is something that you guys need to take this because this is what the Lord is saying to you as those mantle carriers of this. And it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over the Jordan. And you and all his people, to the land which I am giving them, the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and the great, the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man, oh, I'm sorry. No man will sh shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I, was with, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And you need to underline that. I will be with you. So I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. For to this people you should divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, had commanded you. Underline this part right here. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. No matter, no matter. In other words, no matter what it looks like in this season of hurt and pain, do not turn from what God is telling you to do. Because there, you're going to run into situations when it hurts, uh, we were, uh, last year, we're in the feedlot business. Last year, I said, uh, we, we wanted to grow by 25%. And, and so I said, okay, Lord, I want 100. This year, I, I want to be specific, and I want to pray for these things. And uh, I said, I, I, I'd like to get 150 head of this, and then I want another 50 head of this. And, like, just bringing that to God, like, I want, I, God want. God wants me to have the, the desires of my heart. And so I'm bringing this to God. And, man, we get, it's like the phone starts ringing and people are calling and they're wanting to send. And we had like two guys that are going to send 200 head each. And I'm like, hey, I get the guys together. I'm saying, hey, guys, we're, we done made it to the big leagues. We ain't got enough room. We about to, I don't know what we're going to do, but we got we to gotta figure something out. Some stuff's got to go, but they're going to send us 400 head. And, and I was like, man, like, thank you, God. And I rem and it was like, I told him that, and I was really excited, and we were good. Like, I could just see a vision of that happening, and we, everybody was going to get to work, and we are just going to have fun. And, I mean, it was like within a week, both of those guys called and backed out. And, I, and, I, and, and it, w it was just things changed, you know what I mean? And I got overexcited, and I got in a hurry. And so I said, okay. Um, hey, I understand. I didn't get mad. I didn't lash out. I was like, I just kind of was like, God, what are you trying to show me here? What are you doing? What are you doing on the inside of me that I need to recognize what's going on here? And 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 I kind of just waited. I had to go back and tell the guys, Hey, uh, I spoke too soon. Uh, turns out I, I don't I don't know what we're gonna get, you know. And so uh, the guy calls back and he's gonna send some cattle. And uh, turns out, man, I went to putting the all the numbers together, and like right at right now, this day we're at we're at 150. We're exactly what I asked for this year. No, when when God come through, and and I and I seen something bigger, I got excited, and 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 God was like, I I kind of took my eyes off what God was going to do there, and 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 instead of breaking breaking to that, I just I just stepped back and said, God, what are you trying to do here? And when it all come down to it. Everything that I prayed for and everything that I'd asked for was to the T 
of what he was going to do and what was there. And, and I just want to encourage you, don't, don't let bigger things try to come in and discourage you. Because I, I did get discouraged when those guys called and said, we're not doing that. And I was like, man, that, that ain't no fun, you know. I've, I got to go back and tell all these guys that we're not getting Christmas bonuses or <laughs> no, no jackets, no, you know. Like, and so definitely this time of the year um, when we start to meet with our families, I know my family, they can't all get together in the same room for more than about two hours, you know. Um, they just, we just, they just won't let us, you know, we can't, they'll tear the room up or something, but I want you to be in, on, on alert this holiday season as we begin to meet with families. Don't let the enemy ta- attack your relationships with coworkers, family, friends, church member, spouses, or even your kids. No matter what the situation, when we respond in the right context, Jesus can restore it back to you. Like David and most pastors, And speakers that you've heard at this pulpit say relationships are the currency of the kingdom. And when I'm when I'm ministering or arguing or struggling with people, you know, you want to get mad. And and I and I remember this five, six years ago, I was just I was upset and I was more or less complaining to God and um, he he whining to him pretty much, you know. We we whine to God and 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 God talks to me kind of like I guess Dave Morrison would talk to me, you know. If you've ever heard Dave Morrison, it's pretty cut, dry, and and there's no sugar coating and no going around the truth. It's like hammers and nails, you know. It's it's pretty straightforward. And and the Lord said, "Hey, if if you had the say so, and whether they went to hell, would you send them there?" And that set me back. I, I don't want I don't want to see nobody go to hell. I don't I don't want to I definitely don't want to be the guy that sent them there. You know what I mean? And the, and the Lord was like, well, then then keep quiet and let me do my job. And you pray for them and give them food when they're hungry, and I'll do the rest. And, and uh, God can restore anything that we mess up. And uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 12, it says, Now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart and with fasting and weeping and mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. And 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 on the Wednesday night series, uh, Nick he talks about the three part being, and one of that, and one of the one thing that I got a relate, uh, sorry, a revelation of. I've been through the course two times. He's preached it two times here, and it seems like every time he preaches it. I get a new revelation of it, you know, and something really sticks out. And so um, I've been through that course twice, start to finish, and um, in those services. And and then it says our soul is being saved. And so our soul needs rest, and my soul needs to be restored. We get tired. We get weary. We need rest. We need to be restored. We need to be... uh, yeah, we need to be saved and restored. And so that's a process. That's seed and time and harvest and a new season, and then it starts over. We get busy. We get into seasons. In Psalms 23 and 3, it says, He restores my soul. He leads me in the rights of past, uh, righteousness for His name's sake. Because at times, our soul is tired and needs to be restored. And, and, and it brings us back to righteousness. When, when God restores our soul, it, it brings us back to righteousness. It brings us back into right alignment with the kingdom. And um, in Joel 2.25, it says, So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. And underline this next part. It says, My great army, which I sent among you. So God sent the locusts among them to destroy them. The Bible is always talking about restoration. And that word locust, it means destruction and, and devastation. When we do the right thing, no matter what it looks like or feels like, God will restore it. And restore in the Bible, it means to, to rebirth and it means anew. It's, it's, it's always talking about, I'm going to restore back. I'm going to bring a new thing. And, that, and that's what it's talking about. So this holiday season, look for those times when God wants to restore a relationship because most of the time it's not what it looks like or what it feels like. 
Don't let hurt or unforgiveness keep you from being restored in this season. Forgiveness is for us. You know, a lot of t- I'll come in and, and, and uh, you know, if that like those instances where I felt hurt and, and betrayed. And I, and I just had to say, you know what, Lord, I forgive, I forgive them. That was for me. That was to release me because the Bible says if I don't forgive, I cannot be forgiven. You know what I mean? And, and 90% of the time, they don't even know that they did that at the end of the day. You know, and they're like, I didn't even know. And until you can maturely get over it and go back to them and say, hey, man, this happened and this hurt. You know, I don't know. I, if you, I, I'm not there yet, you know, and I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm, I forgive those people in my life. But when God tells me to go back and go visit with them, it might be tomorrow. It might be 10 years from now. I forgave them. You know, I forgive you for doing that. He's like, what? And then I'd have to explain it. And they might not even know, you know. And so I just want you to be mature in that. Hey, forgive them because Jesus forgave you.